the last of the big Oscar movies to tackle on my channel. It's nominated for three biggies, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Picture of the Year. Let's talk about Triangle of Sadness. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film Triangle of Sadness. This was nominated for three big awards at the Oscars, and it's still playing in select theaters, but you can check it out now on Peacock as well, uh, so you can watch it for free at home. Uh, and this is a uh, movie in three parts, sort of sticking with the triangle theme, uh, directed by Ruben Ostland, and it is his first uh, full-length English language film, um, and it stars a bunch of people you, you may not know. Woody Harrelson, though, uh, has a role in it as well, and he's a lot of fun here, but uh, the main two stars, Harris Dickerson and the late Charbly Dean. Uh, she just passed away in uh, August, I believe, of 2022 so this was uh this will be now her final film um and it essentially covers these these two together uh going on a luxury cruise line with a bunch of wealthy guests they are sort of famous in their own right um as like influencers models uh kind of thing but before we launch into any more specifics about the movie and my review of it I want to welcome you to Damn Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. Uh, if you are an Oscar watcher like myself, all of the movies nominated for major awards um, are now available for reviews uh, on my channel. You can sort of uh, stream them that way. In fact, uh, I made a playlist as well of all the, the big Oscar nominees this year that you can uh, watch. But uh, in, in any event, this movie is uh, about two and a half hours long. And we're going to discuss uh, the length of it as well as some other things. I was unfamiliar with the director, to be honest. Um, and, and I really was not sure what to expect with this movie. It was one that, um, you know, I didn't really want to know much about going in. I knew Woody Harrelson uh, had a role in it. Um, and based on the poster, I could see it was on a, a big, expensive boat. Um, you know, I didn't know if it was a cruise ship, a big yacht, what. Um, but that's all I knew going in. And... I feel like that's all I kind of want to tell you guys about it too, um, because it is something that the the three sides, the three um, you know acts or parts or whatever, um, are so very different, um, both in tone and uh, everything else, and setting and all of that. A lot of different characters too. Um, you know, some some we meet that go away, and, and others uh, you know are there throughout the whole movie and whatever. Um, so I think we'll just sort of leave it there in terms of the plot. This movie, though, um, is frustrating because it's got some really interesting ideas. It's got some interesting things to say about, um, you know, sort of the uh, the power structure uh, in the world and, uh, you know, the, the haves and the have nots sort of thing um, with the people that work for the cruise line uh, versus, you know, the, the, the people aboard. Um, you know, there, there's some interesting things there. Woody Harrelson's character throws, um, you know, e even more into that mix. Um, but this movie is way too long. It's got a fair amount of flaws as well that, that we'll sort of go over, I guess. Number one is, is that length. Um, you know, in some of the Oscar movies that do run, you know, a little over two hours or even way over two hours, um, I did not feel the length nearly as much as I did in this one. Now, I will admit Tar, which I loved apparently more than most of my friends, um, I, I did not see it in a theater like I saw this. So, you know, I was able to watch it sort of in, in two uh, settings, same day, but, uh, you know, I paused it a little bit. So I may not have felt the length of that one as much. Um, but Elvis, for example, which is 10 minutes longer than this, I watched in the theater twice. Um, and, you know, Avatar Way of Water, well, I don't really care for that movie, but, you know, for 45 extra minutes from this movie, I, I don't know that I was ever bored through Avatar just because it was so beautiful to look at. Um, so that's one major problem. I think, um, the director could have easily cut out most of the entirety of Act One, um, and, you know, sort of just given us kind of the, the Cliff's Notes version of, you know, who these two characters are and, and what their deal is. Um, and so with that, you know, I feel like you could have trimmed easily 15, 20 minutes off of the front. And then, um, uh, there is a scene that I don't want to spoil. Um, I will just say that it's disgusting. 
um, and it goes on for way too long, I guess for comedic purposes, um, but it was it was too much for me. Uh, it was the gross out fest um, that I did not really care for. Um, so, you know, you could have excised that to, you know, a few moments rather than like a 10 minute scene, I think. Um, but all of that aside, this does have some interesting ideas. I think that the dialogue uh, can be funny at times. Um, I'm not sure all of those beats hit in the theater, uh, you know, where I watched it with my buddy Tim. There were definitely people, you know, laughing behind us at way more parts than we were laughing at. So it obviously struck them a little bit more. Um, but definitely some humorous moments throughout the movie. Um, and so I enjoyed that. Um, I kind of enjoyed the explanation of, you know, what the Triangle of Sadness is and, and how that relates then to kind of the rest of the movie. I thought that was all right. Um, I, I've never heard of that before, so I'm not sure if that's something that, uh, you know, the, the writer and the director invented or, or what. Um, but in terms of the Oscar stuff, you know, after watching this movie, um, you know, Tim and I had done our Oscar predictions video uh, before seeing this. And we, we had said, like, this is the only movie we hadn't seen. So, you know, maybe we could swap it out for things or maybe we think it'll win or whatever. I, I would definitely swap it out for Best Picture. I don't think it deserves to be up there. I think the screenplay is interesting, though. Um, and Best Director doesn't usually get a nomination if it's not a Best Picture. So I guess I would I would take uh, him out of the, the Best Directing as well. But um, but there's there were a lot of interesting directing choices. Um, and And ones that were, I thought, things I had not seen before. Like, for example, when they're on the yacht, there's a lot of, like, the the camera sort of moving back and forth, swaying a little bit, uh, and sometimes a lot, as a boat would, you know, to give you maybe a little bit of a seasick vibe. Like, I thought that was interesting. You know, was it maybe a little overdone in this movie? I, maybe. Um, but, but it was something that I thought was very cool. You know, and, and there's a lot of things like that in this movie. But yeah, on the whole, it, it just did not hit me uh, the way I, I guess it did with the Academy. I'm not sure that it's warranted there for a Best Picture nomination and a Best Director nomination. Screenplay, sure. Um, you know, I think it's interesting enough. But yeah, definitely too long. You could have topped this off a little over two hours. Um, I will leave Triangle of Sadness with a B. So on the lower end of the Best Picture, still better than Avatar The Way of Water for sure. Uh, more original, I would say. Um, but all right, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.